So welcome to all of you. I'm really delighted to see uh, so many who've come to hear no doubt about um, all about Jackie and um, her brilliant sewing. I want to um, I want to make it clear that I actually approached Jackie. Um, she didn't approach me to be part of this. So um, I noticed what she was doing on Super Troopers and was filled with admiration for the quality of what she was producing and I just thought I bet there are quite a lot of women in this group who love sewing and would love to have um, a session talking about uh, something that I think is incredibly skilled and uh, is often quite undervalued in fact because it's quite difficult to do the, certainly the sort of sewing that Jackie does um, so I, I contacted her via the Super Troopers page and she then came back to me and we had a chat and agreed to do this so I have very much put her on the spot. I wanted to make that clear, but um, I'm, I'm absolutely delighted that she agreed to do it. And as some of you may have heard, I wanted to, um, to start somewhere slightly different, which um, is really with somebody who has uh, zero sewing ability. <laughs> This is my daughter, Anna. And the reason I'm starting with her is because I want to encourage those of you who might see what Jackie does and think, oh my goodness, I could never be that good. And to say, well, you know, you might through lockdown and this period of the winter actually be encouraged to have a go at something. So Anna, can I bring you in here? Um, Anna, just tell the, uh, the, the people who are in on this call, um, how competent a sewer would you have said that you <laughs> that you were um, a few months ago? Um, I had zero competency in sewing. My sewing was really limited to putting on uh, a button, perhaps, every now and again, or sewing name tapes into my children's clothes, which often would fall out, you know, come undone after a few washes. So um, my sewing was rubbish, but I have to say I was not encouraged in sewing by my mother, who... <laughs> who uh, was, <laughs> was not, uh, not a great seamstress, although she has made several pairs of curtains in my house, which is a lot more than I am able to do. Um, so in March, when lockdown uh, came upon us, I decided to buy an embroidery kit, a cross-stitch embroidery kit, and uh, I got it on not on the high street, and it arrived, and it was an unprinted, um, I don't even know what the word is, for the background, she's yeah. So it's it's unprinted as you can see, and it's um it's a kind of quite long. Uh, it says kiss, and I liked it because it was kind of contemporary colours, and I can imagine it being um you know a cushion eventually. So um I have been doing that since March. I had quite a long break over the summer, but I've been amazed at how much I I've, I've enjoyed it. And I find it, you know, I sit in front of the TV or I just sit and listen to a podcast and, and the hours pass by. And um, so, you know, if I can do it, anyone can do it because I'm really not a good uh, seamstress at all. So I think that's just, that's what Trisha wanted me to, to bring to the party and uh, just to say, yeah, have a go if you haven't had a go. The one thing I just want to tell people is I think that it'll make them laugh is, um, uh, threading the needle oh yes so the first week or so when I got the kit I would spend probably about 15 minutes trying to get it was a I have to do it on double thread so trying to get double thread through my needle um of, you know quite thick wool to do this and after watching me get extremely frustrated my husband ordered me those um the, the threading a very quick thread needle things you know the plastic things I've got on I'm sure you'll know what I'm talking about and that changed changed my life in relationship <laughs> to this <laughs> that's how much of an incompetent beginner I am that I didn't even know you had, you know you could use on those things and my husband did so yeah okay so thank you Anna for that contribution as I said you did that that now because you've got to go off and uh, and get uh, Rory from school uh, but thank you for that and and it, it, you know that was designed to be a bit encouraging to anybody watching this who is uh, who, who is now going to, to find out all about how, how brilliant, how at the opposite end of the spectrum, in fact, Jackie is. So th thank you, Anna. And, and I, for one, coming around to see you, have been incredibly impressed by the results. And I think that's, uh, it's lovely what you've done there. So well done. And I am fully to blame for your total lack of ability at sewing. I take that on board. As mothers are always to blame for everything, aren't they? Um, okay, so thank you, Anna. And now I want to bring in Jackie. So Jackie, um, let me say hello to you. Um, hello. It's, 
really delighted to see you. Just um, tell us where you are, because um, even that's nice as well. So where, where do you live? I live in a little village called Milton under Witchwood. It's between Burford and Stowe on the Wold. And I've lived here for 15 years now. Quiet so little village. It's, it's what you call a working village because people commute from here, but it's about one and a half, two thousand people, but it's it's lovely. Yeah, it, so it's in the Cotswolds, isn't it? It's in the Cotswolds. Yes. Yeah, and you were telling me when I first talked to you that that you actually have felt very safe there during uh, during the, the pandemic, um, partly because of uh, you know the, the way that everybody has been um, supportive and helpful and so on. Yes, very. Yes, yes. We um, we've lots. We have four little local shops which we can shop out of. Neighbours have helped each other. People have run errands for each other. No, it's it's totally safe out here. It's lovely. Good, good, good. Well, that's that's really nice. So um, we're obviously here to talk about about you and sewing and um, and the incredible talent that that, that you have for it. Uh, so my first question to you really is is when did you start to become interested in the whole idea of sewing things? Well, I think it first started when my sister was born. I started doing embroidery on her little uh, night dresses. My stepmother showed me how to embroider little flowers. Um, she was a great seamstress. She could make paper patterns out of newspaper, look at something and make a pattern. So she taught me to dress make. And in the teenage years and young woman years, I used to make most of my clothes um, and then, of course, when my son was born, I'd make his little clothes and tray, uh, little jumpers and joggers and all that sort of thing. Um, I haven't dressmaked recently because, I don't know, things are so much cheaper to go and buy now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's interesting in terms of generation because I reckon that um, so that was your stepmom and my mum had a sewing machine as well that that generation actually did come often to sewing through necessity didn't they um yeah. the clothes were too expensive and it was yeah. much much cheaper to make things at home yeah. and there was there was a sort of skill level that was passed on from their their mothers mm -hmm. that was actually quite high in terms of sewing and you know you can tell from the conversation I've just had with Anna my generation and you know that obviously includes you as well. We uh, we tended to do it from choice rather than from necessity. Yes. So I ne ne never really had the need to do to do sewing as such. So I, mm -hmm. I you know I, I never developed it as a skill. Although you know I did do O level GCE um, sewing. But how old were you when you when you did that first embroidery? Were you quite young? You said your, your baby sister. So how old were you? I was seven. Okay, so so seven was when you started. Yes, yes. And in, in terms of learning how to do it, do you, I mean, did you learn that entirely from your stepmom, um, or was there was there anything at school, or or did you do any study around sewing? Yes, um, in school we were taught to embroider. We we had to, well, like you did, you had to make the the bigotry um, apron, the skirt, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but the embroidery was taught by um, a wonderful teacher in junior school. Um, then you had to make your, your a cookery apron when you got into senior school. And then you had to make your um, pleated skirt or your gathered skirt, which was something. Um, yes, it's just always been an interest. I've enjoyed it. And, and being successful at doing it, because I, I think that what put me off was when I did attempt to do something that had a set in sleeve or a collar or a placket or something like that, it would, I'd mess it up. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd, I'd think, I'd see the pattern, you know, I'd get a butterick pattern or something. Yes. And yes. some nice material. And I'd think, oh, I'm going to make this lovely dress. This is when I was a teenager. And I used my mum's sewing machine. And then it would, it would have a set in sleeve and it would go, you know, one sleeve would look one way and another sleeve would look another way. And I'd put it on it would be all unbalanced and stuff and I'd throw it across the room in despair yeah. so uh, presumably <laughs> you enjoyed what you did and uh, uh, and actually uh, managed to do it nicely yes I did and I also went to, when my son was well when he first started school I decided I I needed to do something for me I didn't work when he was at school 
So I went and did a City and Guilds course at the local college, um, a day course. And um, yes, got through that and took exams and, and thoroughly enjoyed it. And but, uh, having, but having made so many clothes for the course, I think it put me off and I didn't make dresses and clothes for years afterwards. <laughs> So what, what direction did your sewing take um, after that? What, was it, did, you, did you continue to sew, but just not clothes? Uh, yes, I think I got more into the, the embroidery and perhaps making cushions and curtains, simple things for the house and the home. But, um, and continued maybe to make, when my son was younger, little shorts, little trousers, that sort of thing. But nothing really for me, because things... I just didn't have the time, I suppose, with a young family. And have you ever been part of any kind of sewing groups or, or anything like that? Um, only in the, in the village, there was a lady that I got to know and um, she was perhaps the one that got me into the quilting side of it. Um, she is in the village and she's very skilled at doing traditional quilting. You know, you, as people say, you, you cut up loads of fabric and then you sew it all back together again. Um, yes, yeah, she, she sort of helped me with that. Um, but as you said, your friend who made the, the wedding ring quilt, um, some of it, the math is you think, oh, you've got to get your head around it. And it sort of put me off a bit. So I, I gave that up for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just to explain what Jackie's referring to there, I've got uh, I've got an incredibly clever sister-in-law. She's married to my brother, and um, she's one of these people who uh, she would be the first to tell you is is totally unacademic. You know, she she is a practical person. She's brilliant at all practical things. Her house is absolutely beautiful, um, with the most glorious curtains and cushions and so on. And she's a quilter. Um, at a very high standard. And she does these really complex quilts with these traditional patterns like wedding ring or whatever. And I said to her one day when I was watching her, I said, you know, how do you do the maths? Because the maths in that kind of complex design-based quilt, which is a repetitive design and so on, is phenomenal. And she said, mm -hmm. I don't know how I do it. I just do it. I just know yeah. how to do it. Yeah. And, and it's one of those things that she can't explain it and she's absolutely brilliant at it. And I, and mm -hmm. I think, you know, uh, in a way, she, does, she also doesn't give herself credit for how brilliant and clever she is, mm -hmm. which I suspect you don't either. And I think it's because when you're good at something and you do it and you build that skill over time because you do lots of different things to practice it, mm -hmm. ultimately you become very, very professional and expert at it. But because it's a domestic pursuit and it's still something that women do at home and they don't tend to blow their own trumpet about it. Mm -hmm. It's not valued as much as it should be. And that was one of the reasons I actually wanted you to come on this oh. <laughs> and talk about it. Because I do think that we need to, but for a start, you know, this will die out. There's no question that over time, uh, it, it will become less and less and less and less common for people to mm -hmm. serve. And, um, and I think that people who do what you do, and my sister-in-law as well, um, they need to be acknowledged and celebrated because it's absolutely fantastic. You know, the things that you do is, are, are just lovely. Um, so I'd like, I'd like you now to show us, um, you know, some of your work because we're, we're sitting here talking about it like a, like a theoretical exercise. And actually it's a very <laughs> practical thing that you do because you make mm -hmm. stuff. And um, uh, just, sh just, just start by showing us whatever you want to show us and, uh, and tell us how you did it. Okay. Well, when I started quilting, oops, I started using some fabrics from a gentleman designer called Cave Facet. Mm -hmm. And he's very colourful. And this is one of the first quilts I made. Very simple, just big squares of fabric. Can you see? Yes, I can. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Very simply done. Just big squares of fabric. And then it's appliqued on the top. Oops. Show. Cut out applique. And then it's hand quilted all around the flowers. And then you have the backing of a different fabric. Yeah. So that's one. 
That's lovely. And uh, tell us a little bit about um, Keith Fassett himself. So, so who is that? Keith Fassett started off as a knitwear designer. He's an American. Yeah. Um, he designed knitwear for many years. Uh, quite intricate knitwear, very colourful, lots of stripes and patterns and different designs. And then he he found he liked sort of, he liked sewing. Um, he met his partner and decided that because she was quilting, he would go into designing quilts for them. And this is another one. Wow, gosh, that's fantastic. This one is very simple. This is just one piece of fabric and the flowers are cut out from another piece of fabric and appliqued on. So those circles on that, is that the printing, that's the print on that the is the That's the print on the fabric. Okay, so, so then, you've, you've got a printed fabric with circles on it, that very bold uh, colours and so on and so forth, yeah. and then you've taken another fabric, cut it out, cut, cut out the flowers, the flower, and you've sewn that on. Did you sew that on by on hand? By hand. And then the quilting is done on the circles. Yes, yeah, so, so quilting is, is the stitching, isn't it, that you make? So you put some kind of backing onto that? Yes. A I quilt think. is three levels, three layers. You yeah. have the top. Yeah. You have inside you have what they call the batting. Yes. Which is like a, a very thin blanket. Yeah. And then you have a backing. Yeah. And the quilting is what holds the three layers together. So you stitch all the way through the three yes. legs in order yes. to get that bumpy. Then it should effect. look the same on the back yeah. as it is on the front. Yeah. And your friend who does the quilts will tell you how difficult that is. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a perfectionist at it. So when <laughs> I've gone through the colourful stage of the K Facet quilts, um, I then me... decided I would like to try something Jacqueline, can I, can I just um, slow you down a moment? If anybody wants to ask any questions, make sure you put it into the chat function underneath and we'll have a question and answer session uh, at the end of this. Um, uh, so I'll try and keep asking questions from, from an idiot. I'm the idiot in the room, okay? So <laughs> I, know, I know nothing about this and, and you, you keep showing us stuff and saying this is really easy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what people like you do you know you say well this is really easy but it doesn't look easy to me but you explaining it like that now I can see that what you've done there is you've basically uh, taken something that is quite straightforward a piece of material that's very bright and colorful and then you just appliqued some interesting mm -hmm. things over the top of it yes. uh, and created something yeah I mean obviously there's an expertise and a and um a skill in doing things like the, the border. You know, you've put, let's just show us that one again, because you put an edging on that, haven't you? You've done an edging on it. Yeah, so you've got that edge. Is, mm -hmm. that, is that just bias binding or something? Or is that just a cross? What, what have you done there? This is just a strip of fabric. Yeah. Two and a half inches wide. Okay. Which you fold in half and you, you use it like a bias binding okay and it's to hold all the edges together and just to give it a nice neat edge yeah and you've you've applied that or you've obviously machined that one you machine it on half of it and then the rest of it you have to hand sew on the back okay so it's you hand can machine it on but i hand sew yes yeah my sister-in-law does a lot of hand sewing on her stuff but beautiful hand sewing i mean mm -hmm. it's is it and uh, she made me two quilts for my house in France and they're, they're oh, quite beautiful and white they are stunning they are yeah. so beautiful yes uh, this is what this is why I, I, I you know I'm in awe of all this stuff because it's just so <laughs> lovely uh, to see so that's that's fantastic thank you show us the next bit right wanting to try something different I made a wall hanging this is not it's quilted but it's, it hangs on the wall. That's lovely. And was that a kit? This comes as, yes. It's what they call a block a month. And it's a lady in Australia who d does these. And each month you get a little pack 
of a kit with all the patterns in it. You buy the pack of the fabrics and the threads and the little buttons and each month you get instructions through. So this would have taken a year to make. Okay. And did, did each of those squares that you've got every month, did it take you a month to do them? No, it took me about a week. <laughs> <laughs> so did, did, did you need her to speed up a bit so that you could <laughs> get on with it? Yeah. So this is one block. Yeah. And then this would be another block. I see. Yeah. And they're all appliqued and embroidered and they've got little coloured buttons on them. Yeah. And this is called the farm, obviously. Okay. And the same with that border that you've got running around the edge. Did, did, did you get that as well? This one is just made from pieces of fabric joined together. Yeah. And then you do the binding, which is like the bias binding. And, and was that in the kit? Yes. Okay. You buy all the fabrics in a kit. Yeah, okay. You don't have to, you can use your own fabrics, but I liked the design and I liked her fabrics and how it looked. And what like. would you say that the level of skill would be for making something like that? What would you, what, uh, how, how good would you need to be to be able to produce something like that? Well, basically you'd have to know, you'd have to be good at applique because yeah. this is done not with a needle turn applique, this is done with something they called apply quick, which is you stick it and you use special backings on it. Right, and then sew around the edge. And then you, you, you tiny little stitches and just sew it all together. So what you're saying there is that you, you basically, um, you literally stick it on, do you iron it on? Yes. Yeah, and that holds it in place, which is- That a holds it in place, tough, yeah. Isn't it? And then all and then you've you got just, to do, you've got to sit and very, very beautifully yes, stitch yes. around the edge. Okay, yeah. I think I could probably cope with that. Yes. I mean, it, it might not look like you've done it, but um, I, I could imagine myself, you know, you've got, the, you've got the difficulty of it slipping and sliding all over the place has gone because you've actually stuck it down. You've stuck you? it down, yes. Yeah. Okay, lovely. That, that's really pretty. And of course, there you've also got the whole thing about the colours, <laughs> colorways uh mm -hmm. the colorways all work working together effectively yes. so you yeah. haven't got to worry about a the design yeah. element of it have you no and then i decided to go a bit more traditional because i have grandsons and when they come to stay i thought i'd like to make a keepsake quilt for them which way is it this way so i made a more traditional one which is this one yeah, that's great. That's lovely. Oh. And being so for the children. Your, this is your own design now. This is, yes. This is just fabrics I had and it's just squares. Yeah. And then I put all sorts of children's things in like, we live in the country, so there's pigs and ducks and sheep, dogs, all sorts of things on it. Yeah. But that's just a traditional looking yeah. quilt. That that's, that's absolutely lovely. And what I love about these is that they are works of art. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're individual. They're, they're one off, you know, yes. nothing like that exists anywhere else no. in the world. And um, they're personal to the person that you've um, yeah. made them for as well. And so, it's backed with a very old Laura Ashley fabric. Lovely. <laughs> we all remember <laughs> our Laura Ashley fabric. Yes, yes, which, we do. Um, which, which must have been a gift for, to quilters because she did all those little tiny designs. Yeah. Yes. I remember them well. Um, then I decided to go, well, a bit different. I like teddy bears, so I made that. <laughs> wow, that's fantastic. So beautiful. So again, this, is this your own design? No, this again was um, a pattern bought off the internet. The fabrics I, I were mine out of what they call the stash. And it's got felts and just bits and bobs that I had in the, the cupboard. 
but I just thought it was fun. So. so so tell me a bit more about that. So so you added some extra bits that you had to that quilt. Is that right? What did you actually buy? Oh, I had to buy I, mean, I bought the felt because I thought being teddy bears, they've yeah. got to be fluffy. So I bought yeah. felt. Okay. Um little bits of lace, some or the backing, I didn't have enough backing, but all these fabrics are what I had in my cupboard, in my stash oh, cupboard. So I'm still not totally clear, is that, it, that wasn't a kit? No. No, this was your own design? Well, the pattern for the teddy bears, I yeah. bought off the internet. I see, okay. All right, so so you've, you've done a huge amount of the work there, is you originating that, and then the, yes. the, the colours yes. and, and, and all that yes. stuff. All those things that you've done on there yeah mm -hmm. that's that's lovely so this is one step up really from that yes um, this is month, one step up month month to square kit that you yes have. yeah <laughs> yes and there are oh various cushions if you'd like to see just show, show us a couple of your cushions oh. wow that's lovely. These are Donegal wool tweed. I've never so, done again, anything. Can I, can I ask you, um, is that a, a, a kit or a, your own design? This Where again is a kit. I tend to buy kits because they have all the fabrics, they have the instructions, they have the colours that all go together. Yeah. yeah. And this one is, is particularly nice because I have never worked in wool before. And this is all hand embroidered and appliqued, um, just two matching cushions. Yeah, gorgeous, really lovely. Um, tell us a little bit about equipment, do you reckon, that you need? So what's the absolute basic? We'll come on to the, uh, I want to talk about the doll in a minute or two, but um, <laughs> when you come back. Um, so, so what would you say is the absolute basic equipment that you've got to have to be, uh, you know, be able to do what you do? Well, I suppose a sewing machine. Uh, good but pair even, of scissors. Even with the sewing machine, because I went to, I bought a sewing machine um, when I made Anna's curtains when she got married, because uh, we didn't have one. And I just went to John Lewis and um, had a few lessons on, on you know, but I just wanted a bog standard basic machine. Mm -hmm. So my machine doesn't do anything fancy, but it does go, you know, go up and down, which is kind of what you want when mm -hmm. you're doing curtains. So do you have quite a, a quite a fancy machine? Well, I, ha I don't have a fancy machine. I have a machine which they call a quilter's machine, um, only because on a normal sewing machine, what they call the throat, which is between the motor bit and the needle, is wider okay, so that so when you're deeper. doing you've got more room to get a quilt through if yeah. you're hand if you're machine quilting yeah yeah that makes apart sense apart from that um oh it does some fancy it does fancy stitches it's computerized but you don't have to have that a normal no. sewing machine that just does a straight and a zigzag stitch you can do a quilt yeah. Yes. Okay. And then besides that, presumably it's just, I, I always think sharp scissors shouldn't be under a, underestimated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, not use the kitchen scissors. That's the worst oh, thing no. you're doing. <laughs> scissors that you use to cut the rind off the bacon, you sort of think, no, well, no I've got some scissors. <laughs> no, no. Um, and actually no. really, really sharp scissors helps a lot. Yes. And you really need, need a cutting board. Okay. And you need for quilting. A rotary cutter, okay, which is invaluable but extremely sharp and dangerous. Right. Uh, a good tape measure, good pair of scissors, threads, needles. Yes. Uh, yeah. If you're doing quilting, I would suggest having glass-headed pins because then you can't lose them yeah. so easily. But apart from that, there's not a great deal that you you really need. You just build it up as you go. Yeah, well, that's, fan that's that's all fantastic and really exciting. Show us your dolly. Oh, <laughs> this again was because I wanted to challenge myself. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I love this doll. And in fact, it was that picture of that doll on uh, Super Troopers that made me want to contact you. Um, mm -hmm. Because I just think it's such, it's such a lovely thing. And anybody <laughs> out there who's got any, you know, family member, um, whether they're grandchildren or nieces, nephews or whatever, or probably nieces rather than nephews, but something like that is just so lovely. And, and, mm -hmm. and again, it's such a personal uh, thing if you've made it all. You, you've made her a new dress, you said. I have made her a new dress, yes. <laughs> For her appearance today in front of her audience. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about this. This is, again, it's a kit, isn't it? Quite a This is a kit. kit, yes. This is a kit. It, I found it on um, my Facebook, sort of chatting to people, and somebody had said, oh, what have you been doing in the lockdown? And this particular lady said, oh, I've been doing this and this, and you know, I, I'm going to make a doll. And she said the website was called Polly Dolly Doodal. And I thought it was such a funny name. I looked it up and discovered these and thought, I don't need a doll. I'm too old for a doll. But <laughs> actually, they're so cute. I think I might like to make one. <laughs> so, so I did. And then when the kit came, and I looked at the instructions, I thought, oh my God, how am I going to make this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was quite challenging, wasn't it? It was challenging. The body, and that didn't worry me, it was the face and yeah. the head and the yeah. hair. Yeah. I, thought, I don't know, how, how am I going to do that? <laughs> and you, you crocheted the hair, didn't you? Well, it's all in the kit. This is mohair wool, the hair, yeah. and to make the hair you have underneath this hair is a little cap which is crocheted with this wool yeah and then when the cap is done you have to pull all these long strands through it so is the cap ready crocheted or do you have to crochet? no you have to crochet it yeah so you need to do crocheting to be able to do it. and then you've knitted that cardigan yes i knitted the cardigan i made the dress and she comes with little petticoat, little panties, and she has baby socks and baby shoes. <laughs> and the baby socks and shoes come with the kit? Yes, they do. Everything comes, the whole lot. Okay. The whole lot. But the dress that you've made her for her appearance on this, uh, on this show, <laughs> did, um, <laughs> did you make that from material? Yes. You had? Yeah. Yes. You just added in another dress. I, I mean, it's just brilliant. I, I, I just really, really brilliant. It's lovely. And, and that would make such a beautiful present for somebody because it's just so special. Um, yes. But yeah. they all come out differently. If you go on to the website for this particular doll, the, there are so many ladies making them and they all look totally different. Yeah. But they're I'm just sure. all as beautiful. But you, you put your own individual spend. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's getting the face right. Gorgeous. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, she's got a very dear little face. Um, yes. That's just lovely, Jackie. So um, beautiful stuff that you've shown us there. I'm going to come to Bryony now and just ask Bryony if she's got some questions that she wants to um, to put to you from from our audience, which is over 50 people have been watching you. Oh gosh. Yes, gosh. <laughs> we have had quite a few questions. Um, oh my. Hi, Margaret wants to know um, whether you've got a dedicated sewing room in your house. She would love a craft room herself. Yes, I have. I'm sitting in it. <laughs> oh, amazing. That's yes. wonderful. It's just, just one of our spare bedrooms. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it's nice though, isn't it, um, Jackie, to have a, a dedicated room because it means you can leave things there and go back. Yes, to them. yes. And also it doesn't matter how, because it, it's quite messy sewing, isn't it? You get threads everywhere and you know what I mean? You make quite a lot oh, of yes. Yes. material. But if I'm cutting out a quilt or a cushion, I can just leave it ready and laid yeah. out. And I think, right, that's it. Yeah. But then not everybody has the luxury of uh, space oh, no. to do that. But uh, a, a dedicated area is quite nice, I think. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. Brian. Okay. Um, Jill wants to know whether the wall hanging on the wall behind you was that a kit because she absolutely loves it oh yes yes that was a kit as well yes this is called the seaside town it's lovely yes it comes 
with all the fabrics, all the buttons, all the instructions, everything. They're quite nice to do. And was that the same uh, kit source as the other one that you did, or is that a different yes. one? No, these are the same lady. This lady's called Lynette Anderson, and she lives in Australia. And is she does. Is that L I N N E T? -T -E? Uh, L Y N E T T E. Lynette Anderson. Yes. Anderson. Okay. Um, and so if, if somebody Googled Lynette Anderson, would her name come up? Yes. Okay. Yes, she would. Yes. Just in case somebody wants to pursue that. Um, okay, mm -hmm. Brian, another question. Um, Rosie has asked, did you ever go to the, sh uh, the sewing shop in Chipping Camden? They ran courses and she brought a, a few kits from there. Shipping Camden. No, I don't think I have discovered that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask Rosie to reach out to you. Yes, um, <laughs> meet her there. <laughs> yeah. And there's um, a question from Hannah. A friend of hers has asked her to make um, a throw using um, some of her late mother's scarves. Um, oh, yes. She's been thinking, is there any particular challenges as the materials do all vary? What do you think the challenges could be? We'll be very careful with silk fabrics because they're particularly difficult. If she can keep all the scarves more or less to the same type of fabric, mm -hmm. um, be careful with some scarves because they're very stretchy and that would be very difficult to do. So if they're nice and stable, mm. she should be fine, but be careful of silks and stretchy scarves. Okay, okay. And a similar question. Sue wants to know, um, when you're doing all of your quilting by hand, what stitches is it that you that you normally use? Are there a couple of stitches that you use a lot of the time? Quilting basically is a running stitch. Okay. Yeah, that's all it is. Hmm. Um, how big, how small depends on, on, on your, your preference thickness of your fabric, thickness of your wadding, but it's basically just a running stitch. Okay, fine. So if you can get used to using the running stitch, then you should be in a sort of a good place to start. With. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. And what would you suggest? Um, Linda was wondering, what would you suggest that a novice starts with? A cushion. A cushion. Yes, a simple cushion. Uh, there's a very simple one. Amazing. Very simple to do. And that's a plique. Yes. Yeah. But so easy to do. Doesn't have to be horses. It could be anything. Could be flowers, could be hearts. But that's a very simple one to do, which is a plique, a little bit of embroidery, a little bit of running stitches. You can add some buttons, mm. your own thing. Okay, and just one final question from Hannah. She wants to know what the advantage is of the cutter that you showed over scissors. Right, when you're quilting, um, cutting out loads and loads of different bits and sizes, you have to use the cutting board to get the accuracy because to do quilting, you have to have very straight edges. Mm -hmm. And with the cutter, you use, oh, I can find it. You have to use a quilter's shape mm -hmm. and you put this on your fabric and with your cutter you can get a nice really straight edge. Ah, uh, okay. So it's all about precision. It's all about, about precision, especially if you're making traditional quilts where you've got lots of angles and, you know, things coming yeah. together. It's like a big puzzle almost. <laughs> oh, it is, yeah. yes. Yes, as my husband says, you cut up material and then you sew it all back together again. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. I'll hand back to Trisha now. Um, Jackie, thank you very much indeed. Um, we welcome. We, I think you've held the audience spellbound during that. It's just brilliant. And um, oh. <laughs> and I, lo I, love, I love what you do. I think it's, uh, as I said, I think it's something that needs to be celebrated more, uh, more often. So congratulations on all, all the things that you've made. I think, I think they're really a wonderful example of your skill. Um, and 
you know, and, and, and the, the kind of the way that you've committed during your life to uh, to developing that skill in a way. So, uh, you know, thank you. Thank you for sharing it with us because uh, well, thank you for having me. <laughs> really interesting. And I, what I hope with the people watching is that we've inspired you perhaps to have a go. Um, some of you, I'm sure, watching this are already really good at, um, at sewing, but maybe uh, it's giving you some new ideas. And um, I like the idea a bit like, you know, Anna's very much beginner's um, example is that you can buy. Oh, I thought the Anna's was beautiful. Well, do you know what impressed me beautiful. about that? Now she's gone. I can talk about her behind her back. Um, <laughs> is that she, what impressed me when she got? She said, "I'm going to do a tapestry uh, kit thing," and I thought it would be all printed up. And it wasn't, it was just a blank, literally a blank canvas. And she had to count all those yes. stitches to get that, that shape. And it's got quite a lot of mistakes in it and she's got bits missing, but that, oh, she's back. <laughs> <laughs> all right, ma'am, I was here the whole time. <laughs> I thought you'd gone to get Rory. Uh, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, hello, Anna. I wasn't talking about you behind your back. I was just saying how impressed I were with you. But my point was that what impressed me particularly was that you, did, you didn't have it already there, uh, you know, printed out for you, which is very, very much easier. I've done those kind of tapestry kits and they're quite straightforward. That's a bit like painting by numbers. But what you had to do was to actually count all of that. Mm -hmm. And um, I quite like the fact that you've missed bits out and made mistakes because it makes it <laughs> highly individual. <laughs> Full of mistakes. And, oh, but it's um, lovely. <laughs> it's beautiful. But, and I, so after a while of making these mistakes, because you know, my counting is a bit rudimentary, <laughs> um, I just thought, well, no one's going to mark this. It's not like I'm doing it for some kind of competition and they're going to go through it and say, well, she you know, should have left three spaces, she should have left two. So I kind of relaxed about it and then just thought it'll be completely idiosyncratic and and original, even though it's a bit messed up. It's not totally, you know, it's it's more or less all right, but if you looked at the detail, you'd think, mm. yeah. No, I think it's good there. And I it's still there. Yeah? Can you, somebody's just put a, a, a thing, can we see Anna's? Oh, oh yes. Um, it's lovely. Yeah. So yeah, it's um, beautiful. Yeah. It's broadly speaking, you know, as a, I'm going to have it made into a cushion and, a, and no one will notice the... Yes, the you can make a cushion, Anna. No, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> I've got a friend from school who I kind of reconnected with over lockdown and she's got a business doing um, upholstery and she showed oh. me a cushion that she designed and made herself of this kind of tapestry. So I thought I'll send it to Susie and she can do it for me. Oh, <laughs> oh it'll look beautiful. Yeah. Really lovely. Yeah, well, so um, so there we go. We've uh, we've 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 seen from Anna's starting point, you know, real total beginner, totally um, what's the word neglected by her mother who didn't teach her any skills whatsoever <laughs> in, in that area. Um, to you, Jackie, um, you know, the, at the uh, very much at the other end of the scale. So thank you so much. Thank you everybody You're for welcome. coming and listening and watching. These Zoom calls wouldn't work if we didn't have an audience. So I'm always incredibly appreciative and it's lovely that we've had over 50 people who wanted to come well, and find I'm out amazed. what uh, Jacqueline's <laughs> been doing. Yes, yeah. I mean, I'm always, I'm not amazed because I think there's a huge interest out there, um, but I'm always gratified when people do turn up because without them, we, we just you and me talking, mm. that would have been pleasant as well, but uh, a bit beside the point. Yeah. Um, well, I'd love to hear from anybody who's like-minded. I'm here, if anybody wants to help. It'd be yeah. nice to chat to somebody else as well. <laughs> Yes, well, we can do all that through Super Troopers. So if anybody yeah. wants to put something out on uh, Super Troopers, uh, if you want to put anything out to Jackie on Super Troopers, just, um, you know how to do it, type her name in and then she gets uh, copied into that. Uh, so Jackie, thank you. That was just thank brilliant. You. Thank Lovely. you for having me. Thank you. Bye. And thank you everybody else for, for being with us. Bye bye, everybody.